Dear students, we were looking at various important sample surveys that have been covered in India on understanding and studying elderly issues. Another important survey that we are going to study now is conducted by Helpage India, which is Economic and Health Survey on India's Oldest Old, which is 80 plus years, their needs, care and access. Aging is a universal process and it affects each human being in the world. It is a byproduct of demographic transition, that is, the change from high fertility and mortality rates to low fertility and mortality rates. This phenomena is more evident in developed countries, but recently it is increasing more rapidly in developing countries like India. One of the major features of demographic transition as you are aware, in the world has been the considerable increase in the absolute and relative numbers of elderly people. This has been especially true in the case of developing countries like India. About 60% of the elderly live in developing world and this will rise to 70% by 2010, which already has risen. Further, the older population itself is aging with the oldest old being more than 10% of the world's elderly. So, as a result of the current aging scenario, there is a need for all aspects of care for the oldest old, which are 80 plus years, namely socio-economic, financial, health and shelter. All these problems have an impact on the quality of life in old age and health care at the time of the need. Increase in lifespan also results in chronic functional disabilities, creating a need for assistance required by the oldest old to manage their simple daily course. So when we are looking at the Indian context, the 80 plus years of elderly, which is we also call them as oldest old, are eventually increasing in number. Therefore, it is likely to have a bearing on their economic activities. Poverty and loneliness further add to the problem of elderly care by rendering them even more vulnerable. So with old age and further advanced ages, the issues like loneliness, isolation, elder abuse, health care, lack of access to health care, these issues are ever increasing. As we know that traditionally in India, the most common form of family structure was the joint family. The extended family consisted of at least two generations living together and this arrangement was usually to the advantage of the elderly as they enjoyed a special status and power. But with growing urbanization and depending on the availability of jobs and also industrialization and migration, Children are moving out of the extended family setup, leaving the empty nest and establishing their own nuclear families. In the coming years, the elderly population will hence phenomenally grow in numbers and at the same time, the family size will continue to reduce, more so in the urban areas. In the absence of traditional caregivers, due to the disintegration of the joint family, and women moving out of the household, the elderly have become a vulnerable group needing care and attention. Helpage has preferably felt the need of studying elderly because to understand their issues relating to oldest old living in the urban areas, especially with regard to their health and economic conditions their existing support system at the family and community level. The study outcome is expected to provide a better understanding of the status and bring out the issues that need intervention and advocacy. What are the objectives of this study? The major objectives of this study is to assess the availability and utilization of healthcare services by the oldest old. Another objective is to assess the economic condition of oldest old 
in terms of housing conditions, availability of assets, access and freedom to spend money. Another objective is to assess the level of access to various welfare schemes and health insurance, to assess the support system available within the family system and also in the society. What are the methodology ad adopted for conducting this survey? The major technique used in this present study is both qualitative and quantitative research methods have been used. The main survey was quantitative with structured interviews amongst oldest old men and women. The qualitative component included in-depth interviews carried out with various target groups mentioned below. The target groups of the study areas for the qualitative and quantitative part comprised oldest old in the age group of 80 plus years in the eight cities such as Delhi, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, Bhopal, Chennai, Patna and Hyderabad. The respondents covered in qualitative study include oldest old, government healthcare providers and private healthcare providers. In all, 48 interviews were covered in this study. Let us have a look at sampling design. The sampling design followed for the quantitative component of the study is select the first method includes the selection of wards. In each city, as I mentioned, wards with section C and below categorizes households or areas were selected for the study. To carry out this exercise, basic information about different wards and the socio-economic strata were collected at the city level. This was done with the help of municipal corporation, officials of each city and the sample size was distributed equally across all the selected wards. Step 2 includes selection of the respondents. Targeting the people aged 80 years and above is challenging, especially in urban areas. Hence, the survey adopted the following strategies to target the sample. It directly contacted the target groups at household level and contacted them for getting information about the target groups by visiting public places such as parks, temples and churches and others. Senior citizen associations was also contacted to collect contact details of the target groups. Along with these strategies, snowball sampling procedure was also adopted for targeting the people aged 80 years and above. Let us have a look about Section C, the socio-economic classification SEC groups urban Indian households on the basis of education and occupation of the chief wage earner CWE, the person who contributes the most of the household expenses of the household into five segments SEC A, SEC B, SEC C, SEC D, SEC E households in that order. So, various socio-economic classifications are made based on A to E. This classification is more stable than one based on income alone and being reflective of lifestyle and more relevant to the examination of consumption behavior. Here, high socio-economic classes refer to section or SEC A and B, mid socio-economic class refers to SEC C and low socio-economic classes refer to SEC D and E. Let us see the research instruments used for this survey. The research instruments were designed by Sigma and shared with the client for feedback. Three different types of research institutes instruments were used for data collection. The research instruments were translated into five different languages that is Hindi, Telugu, Bengali, Tamil and Gujarati. Structured questionnaire of the oldest old was framed. Additional information to guide for interview was prepared for oldest old. The guide for healthcare provider 
for in-depth interview was also prepared. This was the basic information about the help it survey that we just looked at. Another important survey that has been conducted on understanding elderly issues is building knowledge base on population aging which is also called as BKPI. This survey was conducted as a collaborative effort with United Nations Population Fund, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Institute for Econo of Economic Growth and Institute for Social and Economic Change, Bangalore. The survey after reviewing the data and studies on the elderly, a national survey was launched in seven states of India. All major demographically advanced states with a regional representation were selected for the survey. BKPI used the following four sets of interview schedules. The major four schedules include household schedule, individual elderly schedule for household residents, institutional schedule and individual elderly schedule for institutional residents. The overall content and format of the schedules were determined through a series of workshops and meetings held in 2010-11. The meetings were attended by representatives of a wide range of research and development organizations, government and experts in the field of population and health. The questionnaires for each state were bilingual with questions in both the primary language of the state and English. The household schedule collected basic information from all usual residents in each sample household like type of amenities to major living standard and other social, economic and demographic information on religion, caste, ownership of household land, death of aged persons, causes of mortality and others. The individual schedule for household residents elicited information about the elderly identity identified in the selected household schedule. In the survey, elderly were defined as those who are aged 60 years and above. The elderly questionnaire consisted of six sections. The first section covered questions on social de demographic profile, marriage, education and migration while the second section had questions on current and previous work status, reasons for current work and the kinds of benefits the elderly received from the work. The third section elicited information related to income and asset and the fourth pertained to various issues of living arrangements and familial relationships. The fifth section dealt with subjective health and health-seeking behavior of the elderly. Aspects related to self-perceived morbidity, hospitalization, type of treatment, disability, economic burden of treatment and others were also addressed. The last section had questions on social security, its awareness and coverage. The institutional schedule captured quantitative and qualitative information on the functioning of old age homes related to management, human resources, capacity, facilities and finances from both public and private institutions in the study area. Whereas the individual elderly schedule for institutional residents was similar to the individual schedule for household residents just with additional questions related to reasons for opting to stay in an old age home and the residents level of satisfaction with the living arrangement. Now we will look at the sample design adopted for this survey. The seven states selected for the survey were Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Odisha, West Bengal. As they had a higher percentage of 60 years population than the national average and also represented all regions of the country. The sample for each state was fixed at 1,280 elderly households. 
The size of the sample was guided by several considerations, the foremost of them being to generate reliable estimates of indicators at a reasonable level of precision and cost. Being a survey of the elderly, the sample size was equally split between urban and rural areas, irrespective of the proportions of urban and rural population. 80 primary sampling units, villages or urban wards, 40 urban and equal number of rural with 16 households per primary sampling units, which is called as PSUs, having an elderly person were covered in the survey. The respondents to the household schedule included any usual resident member above the age of 15 years, while in the case of the individual schedule, all those who aged 60 and above in the sample households were the respondents and were interviewed. The urban and rural samples within each state were drawn separately. The PSUs in the rural areas were villages, whereas urban areas were the PSUs in the urban areas. Wards First, villages were classified into different strata on the basis of population size and the number of PSUs to be selected was determined in proportion to population size of each stratum. Using probability proportionate population size, which is called as PPS technique, was selected and within each selected PSU, elderly households were selected through systematic sampling. A similar procedure was applied in drawing samples from urban areas. While preparing the sampling frame, it was decided to omit villages with less than 20 households and wards with less than 40 households as they constituted a smaller proportion of villages or wards in these states. Moreover, in Himachal Pradesh, due to the small size of villages, the rural PSUs had to be increased from 40 to 48 villages. The house listing of mapping exercise of all the households in the selected PSUs were carried out. As the list of elderly households was not available, this information was gathered during the house listing and mapping operation. After this, a list of households with at least one elderly person was prepared and the prescribed number of elderly households, 16 households, was selected through systematic random sampling. Since the PSUs were of different sizes, segmentation was done for large PSUs. If a PSU had less than 300 households, house listing and mapping in the entire village or urban ward were undertaken. If the number of projected households in the selected PSUs was more than 300, then the PSU was divided into segments, the segments dependent on the size of the PSUs of nearly equal size and two segments were selected at random for house listing and mapping. With regard to the study of institutions, the list of institutions in the selected seven states was obtained from a study conducted by Helpage India. This was updated by the field agency and 10 institutions each in the seven states were selected for the study. Selection of public and private institutions in each state was done proportionately. From each of these institutions, 10 residents were selected for the elderly interview. Now we'll see the sample weights. Sampling weights were generated at household and individual levels separately for rural and urban areas. Later, the design weight was calculated by adjusting for non-response at both the household and individual level. The sample weights were further normalized at the state level to obtain standard state weights for each of the seven states so that the total number of weighted cases equaled to total number of unweighted cases. What is the sample implementation and data collection? The field work for BKPI was carried out in the seven states simultaneously during the period of May to September 2011. A total of 8,792 households were selected and 8,329 households interviews were completed. Overall, the household completion rate 
that is the number of households interviewed per 100 households was 95%. The household completion rate was 100% in Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, while in all other states it ranged from 89% which is in Punjab to 95% in Kerala. Of a total of 10,604 elderly identified from 8,329 household interviews, total 9,852 elderly interviews were completed either independently or through proxy interviews. The individual completion rate, which is the number of completed interviews either independently or through proxy per 100 eligible elderly identified in the household was 93%. The individual survey response rate for the states ranged from a low of 90% in Kerala and Punjab to a high of 98% in Tamil Nadu. Now we will see the recruitment, training and field work and data processing that took place in this survey method. Manuals intended to standardize the survey procedures were prepared and used for training house listeners and also mappers, field interviewers and data entry operators. The manual for house listing and mapping described the procedures for drawing location and layout sketch maps of sampled areas, listing households and selecting households for the survey. In addition, the procedure for segmentation of PSUs also formed part of the manual. The interviews manual contained techniques and procedures for conducting and com completing the interviews. It explained the questions and procedures for soliciting the responses and quality checks for ensuring consistency of responses. Procedures for conducting proxy interviews in case of the elderly person was not in the position to respond were also explained in the manual. Likewise, a data entry manual was put together and designed along the CSR probe format. Three field organizations were involved in data collection. The training of trainers, TOT, for the various survey activities was conducted for representatives from the field organizations. All the persons who were trained in this workshop subsequently trained in the field staff in each state according to the standard procedures discussed in the TOT. The purpose of these workshops was to ensure uniformity in data collection and data entry procedure across all the states. A house listing and mapping training was conducted at Delhi for two days. In each state, two persons responsible for coordinating the house listing and mapping activities were trained and imparted classroom as well as field-based training. Similar procedures were followed for the main survey and data entry of training of trainers. Both these training programs were conducted at Bangalore. While the main survey of TOT lasted for 6 days, the data entry training was imparted for 3 days. Two trainers from each state were trained in the training of interviewers, supervisors and editors and an equal number were trained in CSP pros for data entry and office editing of schedules. Representatives from UNFPA, ISEC and IEG imparted the training. Recruitment of the field staff was done by individual field agencies. Graduation was the minimum qualification for mappers and listers, supervisors, interviewers and data entry operators. Experience and other relevant qualifications were also considered during selection. Fieldwork for each state was carried out by a number of interviewing team each team consisting of one field supervisor, editor and four interviewers of both sexes, male and female. Each interviewer was required to make a minimum of three callbacks if no suitable respondent was available for the household interview or if the eligible respondent in the household was not present at the time of the interviewer's visit. If the elderly respondent was unable to respond due to incapacitation or ill health, the interview was conducted through a proxy respondent. The field supervisor or editor was responsible for the overall management of the field team as well as conducting spot checks to ensure accuracy of information and field editing and field in schedules. 
field work was monitored by representatives of each of the coordinating organizations as well as the field agencies. Data processing involved office editing, data entry using, CS Pro software, verification of data entry, and secondary editing by research organizations. Apart from this, two national data sets, the Registrar's Census of India and reports from the National Sample Survey Organization, which is NSSO, provide most of the information about India's senior citizens. Statistics about the elderly population are drawn from the most recent NSSO survey, 2005, and published in 2006. The next review was conducted in 2015. The 2011 National Census projects that the current total Indian population of 1.22 billion, second only to China, will exceed by 1.5 billion by 2030 according to the population projections. The elderly population of 90 million may reach 130 million by 2030 according to the Registrar 1996 and 2011 Census of India. India's fertility rate of 2.5% live births may drop further, increasing the current dependency ratio of 125 aged per thousand of the general population ages 14 to 59. Average life expectancy at birth at present is 69.8 years, 68 years for men and 72 years for women. As you all know, that life expectancy is seen higher amongst females as compared to men. Life expectancy at age 60 is 18 years for women and 16 for men. About 3.5% of the total population is more than 80 years of age with women in the majority according to the Registrar 2011. So dear students, overall we learned about two major surveys conducted by HelpAge and second one VKPI where we learned about the sample methods, the techniques used, the important issues that have been covered and in detail we knew about the various steps that has been taken in training and conducting the surveys. These are some important issues to be used in understanding elderly needs and their issues and also in a scientific inquiry while making and studying the social sciences by using various survey and sample methods. Thank you.